The goal of this tutorial is to show you how to scrape data off of any website using Google Documents. Uh, data is available all over the internet, but sometimes it's provided or presented in a way that's difficult to manage and difficult to analyze. What would be nice if we go to a website like this, which is the Bloomberg.com website, uh, where you're seeing the major foreign exchange pairs, and to be able to get the exchange rates uh, on a easy to manage and easy to analyze spreadsheet. So we can actually do this with Google Documents. So the first thing that we will do is go to docs.google.com and open up a new spreadsheet. To do this, you can go to File, New Spreadsheet. Since I already have one open, uh, I'll just work from here. What I like to do is to uh, name all my spreadsheets or give my spreadsheets a more ne meaningful name from the get-go. So we can just say Bloomberg Live uh, Exchange Rates. Um, the first step would actually be to go to the website that you are trying to scrape data from and grab the address or URL from the address bar. I like to paste it in the first cell of the spreadsheet, but you can paste it anywhere. Now we can actually start building our spreadsheet and defining the fields uh, that we want our spreadsheet to scrape. We need currency, we need the date and time that the scrape took place, and we need the data point which is going to be the spot rate. Since currency pairs are often just uh, reverse calculations of each other, I like to show both sides of the currency. You'll see what I'm doing in a little bit. Now, for example, the first currency that we would take is the US dollar over the Canadian dollar. Um, to get the current date and time, there's two ways. The first way is to use the now function, and now just takes the current computer date and time. The second way to do this is to use Google Clock. Google Clock actually is a bit more flexible. It can take in time zone differences. So I think we should go with Google Clock, but it doesn't matter. Next, we're going to actually pull in the data point that we want, but we will use a different function, and that will be uh, import XML. Import XML takes in two parameters, and the first parameter is something that we already have it's sitting in cell A1 and the second one is actually a query. The query is a piece of code that tells Google which exact data point uh, we want it to pull. So we can go back to populating this because I want to talk a little bit about how to develop the query. So if we go back and we open up the website that we are trying to scrape from in Google Chrome and find the data point that we want to pull. So for me, it'll be US dollar over the Canadian dollar, which is 1.0587. If you right click this and go to inspect element, what that will actually do is open up a developer mode and drill down to the HTML source code of the data point. This will actually be different depending on how your website or target website is laid out, but this is the more interesting part. Most of the times when data is formatted on a website, uh, it's presented in a pattern. So we can expand the tags around our data point. And what you'll notice is that all these exchange rates seem to be wrapped into a anchor tag. The A stands for an anchor and the href stands for a hypertext. And it's an HTML, HTML tag that um,
just means that this is a link. So we can use this anchor tag and let Google know that whenever we want, whenever we see this uh, anchor tag, um, to pull this data point 1.0587. So an easy way would just be to copy the HTML back to our spreadsheet. Now the code will be actually import XML. Um, first argument will be A1, the cell reference of the URL, and the second one will be a bit more complicated. The first thing that we want to type is a quotation mark because it is a string, and then we want to forward slashes the anchor tag a bracket um, an at sign um, hypertext reference which is our attribute and then we want to copy the value of our attribute which is quote um, sorry slash quote slash and then it's going to be USD CAD colon CUR and then we want to single quote close the bracket and close the currency so this should pull in our value which it does and so for the sake of time we can hide these two columns and hide this, those are rows, and hide this column. To get the reverse, instead of pulling it, we can just use math. And the spot rate will be the spot rate um, will just be one over the reverse and to format that decimal point we go to custom decimals and since this one is in four we'll do four um, so now we can start populating the other tags uh, currencies so to do that can do this change this back to that first cell and put in the Swiss currency so you'll see that it returned two values and to overcome this we can actually just wrap it in an index function and tell Google to return only the first value. So this is the SEP. This is the Japanese yen. So now that we have all the accurate um, Currencies, we can calculate the reverse. So there you have it. You have all of the currencies. And what's nice about this is that every time you uh, reopen the spreadsheet, um, it will all automatically scrape uh, the data points. So it's pretty much a set and forget it. I would not use uh, this data uh, for any investment purposes. The purpose of this tutorial is just to show you uh, what you can do um, in terms of creating different types of data off the internet. Many companies like CareerBuilder, um, they used to use uh, scraping technologies to aggregate da data from different local websites and uh, build very complex businesses off uh, this idea. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. Thank you.